Welcome back. I have unpacked everything out of my Land Rover Defender because today I am packing for another epic Land Rover adventure. I'm going to be heading out for another week-long adventure with the same group that I went to Big Bend National Park with last year. Everything that was in the Defender is now out here on the floor and I have gathered up everything that I think that I took last year. Let's go through what I think I need to take this year and start packing it up. Before we start packing things into the vehicle, let's go over what is still inside the Defender. And first off, we have this 1500 watt Jackery solar generator. This one is plugged into the cigarette outlet, which is over here, which is going to keep it charged up. The cord that you see plugged in right here, that is for the fridge. I'm using the same Isico fridge that I used on the last trip. This is basically the largest size fridge that I have found that fits nicely back here. This fridge has plenty of storage for one person, but if you have two people in your vehicle, you may have to get creative. You're going to have to get creative anyways because this is a two-door D90, and there's not a lot of room in here to begin with. Over here is my proud Rhino tray. Back here, I'm keeping some trash bags. This is my camping spoon and fork. Keep these things nice and easy to get to. I have a koozie. Up here in the door, I am keeping some gloves, some glass cleaner, and some microfiber towels. Otherwise, the vehicle is empty. Right now, I am charging up my winch remote, and then I'll pack that back away. And up there, I have some OHV stickers that I'm going to need on the vehicle for this trip. Okay, now let's go over some of the items that I'm going to pack behind the seats. Uh, here is my recovery. This has a jack and an impact wrench. The sockets here, they do not fit my vehicle. But if I have to have someone else, I'll have those sockets. And then to go along with that, I'm going to carry this socket set, which has basically the wheel sockets, and these have protective plastic coverings on them. And this will be good to use on any vehicle, including mine, that I should need to take the wheel off of. I'll leave a link to the impact wrench and the socket set in the description below. I was setting those in and remembered there is one last thing in here. This is a step that you can use on your door jam. And then I can use this to get up to the roof rack on this side because there's no ladder on this side of the Defender. So this is really handy to have. I shouldn't need to use it, but if I do, I have it. Next up inside this bag is the air hose for inflating the tires off of the factory air compressor. And then all of my worn winch tools, the first aid kit, and this little fire extinguisher. I do have more of these in the container that is going to be up on the roof, but this one I will keep in short reach in case I need it. Ah uh, yes, and one other thing I forgot, they gave me an umbrella when I bought the Defender, so that's in here as well. Probably won't need it, so it's gonna be packed away on the bottom, but again, it's there if I do. And then I took this on the trip last time, but it's still in the box because I haven't had to use it. This is a kinetic rope from Bubba Rope as well as two soft shackles. I also have some soft shackles in my worn kit as well. These would be for if I need to pull someone out using the power of the vehicle, but it's more likely that I would use the winch for a more controlled pull. Now we have the last items to go in the front of the truck. That is some blue paper towels for cleaning things, some other various cleaning supplies, glass cleaner, some interior cleaning stuff. Then I have a bunch of microfiber towels. I have my raincoat, and this could be important. I took it on the last trip, didn't really need it, but it is a hat that has a bug net attached to it. I really hope that I don't need that because if I do, then I'm in a miserable situation. And over here, I have my radios in this green case. I have my CB radio. Here are a couple ham radios, and then I have my GMRS radios. Those are going to go in the front seat with me. Then I have this bottle of Dawn that I took last time. Didn't need to use it, but I think I'm not going to take this. I want to find a smaller bottle. I'd like a, to find a small bottle that I could put inside the little cubby here. And then of course, 
the tray will hide that. So I'll have to make a trip to the store and see if I can find a smaller bottle that I can carry with me. This one also has a squeezy cap, and if this accidentally got squeezed, it would just come out up here. There's no lockable cap on that, so I've been a little scared of carrying this around, but this is what I took last time. There's two last items to go up front. One is my tool bag with my multimeter, my sockets, my wrenches, pliers, all that kind of stuff, screwdrivers. And then the small jackery that I'm going to have up front so that I can power things um, if I need to plug them in, such as my radios, things like that. If it needs power, I'll have a little jackery sitting up where I can reach it from the driver's seat. That little jackery can just be charged from this 12 volt power cable that I've run up here. The battery is under the passenger seat. And previously I installed a port so that I can just plug cables like this into it and that will keep the little jackery charged up. So far, everything is packing pretty nicely here behind the front seats. Now I can put in all of the soft things. So I have my tent, my pillow, my bedroll. I have a mat to go underneath the tent and my sleeping bag. And then lastly, to go inside the truck, I have a box of food, a couple boxes of food there. I have some cleaning supplies, more microfiber towels as well as one roll of toilet paper and some other paper towels. And then I have a stove, a lamp, some more dishes, a bowl, cup, another knife and fork, things like that, and some Ziploc bags. This other box over here, I think I'm going to put that stuff inside my Pelican case. Oh, and I should point out this really, really cool this is an electric water heater, and this heats up the exact amount of water that you need to cook one of these MREs, that this was a game changer on the last trip. So I'm going to take some water that I can put in here, and I'll stick to mostly these MREs unless we're stopping at a restaurant or someone else is cooking, but this was so nice and so handy. So I think I'm going to be using this to make most of my meals. Everything fits in there pretty nicely this time, and I still have some room behind the driver's seat for my luggage. Now on the side of the Defender, I'm going to put this water bottle. This one has a spout on it, and I can move it over to the other water bottle when this one runs out. I'm going to put it on the Rotopax mount that's on the side. I'll put it with the spout up for when I'm driving, but then the spout will be down here. Once I arrive somewhere, I can just turn the valve get some water to come out of here and I'll fill this up before I leave. And then I think I'm only going to take one of the fuel jugs. I found out on the last trip that my vehicle being a 90 and having the P400 engine that I'm way more fuel efficient than anybody else in the group. So I am not going to be running out of fuel. At least I say that now, maybe I will be the one, but I'm gonna take the big fuel jug and then the big water jug. And I'm going to mount that on the roof on that Rotopax mount right there. All right, I have those mounted. And now that leaves the Pelican case that I'm going to put up on the roof. Inside here, I have some more glass cleaner, some duct tape, another fire extinguisher, a tire repair kit, some double-sided tape, have some scratchets back here, some sponges. This is a bunch of just generic wiring that I could use to repair things. Some trash bags bunch of assorted zip ties, some bigger trash bags. There's a nice hatchet in here. A bunch of different types of roof anchors of different sizes. These are extra parts for the rear tray on my rear door. And then there's a little shovel down there. To add to that, I have some extra Rotopax parts that I'm not using. So if for some reason I needed to carry a friend's jug, I could add those on and carry more jugs than I have right now. And then I'm going to add in some fly traps. Hope I don't need those, but I'll be glad I have them. And then these are some more of the nozzles for the water jugs and some more of the caps. 
I think this is ready to go up on the roof now. I do have a bunch of extra room in here in case there's something that I want to put in here. Sometimes I'll throw my garbage up here if it's small enough. That way I don't have to have it inside the vehicle. On the last trip, I took this big bag on my roof. It has two chairs in it, and I also took a table. I ended up not using these at all the entire last trip, and in fact, I took these to Sand Hollow as well. That's why all that red sand is on there when I went to the Wrecker Games at the Off-Road Games, and I didn't use the chairs there either. I think this time, since I packed smarter, I'm going to take a small camping chair instead of these, and I'll just throw it inside the vehicle where it's easy to get and I can use it very quickly. All right, here's a small camping chair. This is an old Ford Explorer camping chair. Probably came with a vehicle at some point. I'll just throw this in. It has been a couple days now. I had to take a quick trip to New York City, but I'm back now. I checked the stores and I could not find a smaller bottle of Dawn. So I bought these off of Amazon. These are just little flip top soap bottles and these should fit perfectly up here. So I can fill this with Dawn. I'm not going to need a lot of this because this is pretty concentrated. Now I'll fill up one of these bottles and then I can keep it back here. Now I can throw this in there and I don't have to worry about this big bottle leaking everywhere. And then I ordered one new addition to the gear this time, and that is a fan. I'm going to be encountering a different weather system that I had in Texas. The, it could be cold, I could see snow, I could see 90 degrees. So I decided if it's 90 degrees out, I'm definitely going to want a fan. This one has a battery built in down here. So you can charge it with USB-C and you can also power your own devices off of it so you could charge your phone off of it. Comes with a little remote over here. Has a light built into it that has different levels. Has four different speeds for the fan. It also oscillates. So this is oscillating what they are calling 90 degrees of travel. So the 90 degrees is about like that. And then it also has 45 degrees of travel. It also has a sleep mode, so it will turn off at one hour, two hour, four hours, or eight hours of use. You can also just turn it any way you want to. These have pretty good reviews and they say the fan lasts a long time. Uh, they basically say if you have this charged up, you shouldn't have to recharge it for your trip if you're using it just for the fan. So we'll see how well this goes, but I think this is going to be a very welcome addition to the gear. Everything's all packed now, so the next time you see me, we'll be out on the trails.